In this video, we're going to explore the polarity of the different functional groups, so we can identify which ones are more polar than the others and which are considered largely nonpolar. So go ahead and pause if you want to write these down in your notes. But this is the ordering for the polarity. Amides are by far the most polar of our functional groups. In fact, it's going to be very hard to ever find a liquid amide. They are generally solids. They have such strong interactions that they have locked together. This is due to the f two somewhat negative atoms, the oxygen and the nitrogen, both being available to hydrogen bond to the two somewhat positive hydrogens. Next in line is a carboxylic acid. It has a very good hydrogen bonding opportunity, both those oxygens and the one hydrogen. So if you have a second molecule, you can get very good hydrogen bonding. In fact, carboxylic acids rarely break apart. Even in the gas phase, if you heat them up enough to boil, often they leave as this dimer, these two connected this way. What tends to happen is if one hydrogen bond breaks, the other still holds on, giving it time to spin back around and reconnect the second one. It's very hard to actually break these dimers, similarly with a lot of amides. Third in our line are alcohols. Alcohols are more polar than our amines. Despite having two hydrogens that are somewhat positive, the nitrogen-hydrogen difference in electronegativity just isn't as great, and so the charge attraction isn't as great. And so our alcohols tend to be significantly more polar than our amines. Up and down the line after that, esters. And honestly, esters tend to be a little bit less polar than our ketones and our aldehydes, but they tend to be very large by comparison. And so often in terms of our properties that we see, they appear that they are, they appear to have higher boiling points and everything, but they actually are a little bit lower in terms of polarity. So let's redo that one at six with that caveat explanation for what's going on with them. Um, just because of the nature of the functional group, they tend to be a lot bigger and so out, have outsized effects on things like boiling point and freezing point. In terms of polarity though, that leaves us here with five for our ketone and our aldehyde. Aldehyde is more like 5.5 on the list. Now these are polar. There's a carbon double bond oxygen and that double bond puts a lot of charge out on that oxygen. And so these are reasonably polar functional groups, but especially the ketone tends to have large things around it. The aldehyde has some things blocking it and it doesn't have any hydrogen bonding, neither does the ketone. So they're okay dipoles, but they're not nearly as strong as our hydrogen bonding groups. In a pinch, Ketone is generally considered slightly higher than an aldehyde. So you have equivalent two molecules, say two propanone and propanal. In terms of boiling point, we would expect two propanone to be slightly higher. In terms of solubility, we expect it to be slightly better in the polar environments. Ketones just have slightly higher by the nature of being constructed that way versus the equivalent aldehyde. And finally, ether, number seven. It is extremely nonpolar by comparison. There's no hydrogen bonding, and its interactions with the carbons almost cancel each other. I've got a carbon to an oxygen to a carbon, but the nature of the dipole puts it pulling in opposite directions, and so the net effect is that there's a very tiny dipole on an ether. It's not hugely significant. And so ethers are largely nonpolar. These are the expected ordering of our functional groups. So if you were to have, let's say, ethanoic acid and ethanol, well, we could look at them and we could say, which one's more polar? Carboxylic acid's more polar, so it's probably going to boil higher. It's probably going to be more water-soluble. Conversely, if we go over to 
ethanol, it's going to lower boiling point, and it's going to have more nonpolar solubility or less water solubility. And so by knowing the polarity of the functional groups, as a general rule, if we have fairly equivalent molecules, we can make the judgment based purely on the functional group. Now, as you get more and more different, if we have, let's do this very large carboxylic acid versus the same aldehyde, well, what do we know that's going to be different here? I'm still going to be higher boiling. If anything, I'm going to be enormously higher boiling. The longer carbon chain has dramatically increased the boiling point by providing lots of new interaction capabilities. So this is going to be higher than the ethanoic acid by a lot. However, it's probably far less H2O soluble where our ethanol is now going to be more H2O soluble, while it is still lower boiling. So the functional group can kind of help us determine, especially in fairly equivalent molecules, what the interactions and the forces will be and what their properties that will result will be. Then how we combine those different components can let us look at unequivalent molecules to see how things have changed.